Howdy folks, Jeff Sangstack here. I want to show you how to add a title to the beginning of a sequence, and not just any old title, but a title that has multiple layers to it. And rather than build the title at the beginning of your sequence, you'll build it in a separate sequence and then nest that sequence in your main project. It's a better way to do things. It saves you a few steps down the road, and you can always go back and change your sequence if you need to fix it up, uh, or change your title if you need to fix it up later. So the, what I want to do is I want to create something like this something that looks like that, and put that at the beginning of the project. And what you do is you build a sequence like this. This is a five track, a five layer sequence. And then I would nest this sequence inside the main project and put it there at the front. And then I can add cross dissolves to the beginning and end and just do one cross dissolve at the beginning, one for the end, instead of doing five separate ones at the beginning here on this multi-layer sequence. So let me just show you the process to do that. First order of business is to get a couple of still images. And I would go through here and pick some logical place for a still image, like perhaps, oh, like perhaps these oranges, for example. And the way you uh, export a still image, you can always go over here, go File, Export, Media. And then under the uh, format, you can select any one of these still image formats, like uh, GIF, JPEG, Ping, TIFF, Targa. But an easy way to do things is to uh, just use this little uh, export frame button inside the uh, program monitor. Just click on that, it opens up this dialog box, lets you select one of those uh, still image formats. You select where you're going to put it by clicking on Browse and deciding what file folder you're going to put in. Then you click OK. And after you click OK, it just stores that file in that folder. It doesn't automatically load it into your project. Well, I've already done a couple of those guys. This one here and this one down here. I'll just bring them both over to the source monitor. That's how they look. So I got the still image of her and the still image of that. I'm going to use them in my frame. Now I need to create a title in which these guys will go. I've already created a title. It looks like this. And it's fairly simple to create this title. I used a template to do that. And here's how you use a template. You go title, new title, based on template. And then Premiere Pro comes with all sorts of templates that you can use uh, as starting points to create titles. I, for that particular one, I used the uh, travel, uh, world travel, lower third. And that's what it looks like, right? Like that. And I click OK, and then I can change the words to whatever I need to use. And they are, uh, you can change the colors, you can change the graphics, all sorts of stuff. But this is a great starting point, And so that's what I did for this particular project. I'll cancel out of that. So now that you've got your title and you've got your two still frames, you need to create a new sequence. And usually you want to create your sequence to make sure it matches the sequence in which you're going to drop it. And since these two still images came from the sequence, they have the same dimensions. So if I just select both of them, one and then control click or command click on the next one, and then drag them down to the new item icon. If you're in CS5 or CS5.5, this won't work on CS4 or earlier. That will make a new sequence with both of those clips in it. And the sequence, if I right click on this and say sequence settings, you'll see that it is 1920 by 1080 HD and 2997 frames per second, just like the original. So I've got these two clips here side by side. I'm not going to work with them side by side. Eventually, I'm going to put them one on top of the other. But there you go. They're both there ready to be worked with. I'll expand the view by pressing the backslash key. What I want to do is put the title I created on the bottom layer on, the, on video one. So I'm going to get this guy out of the way. And I also want to have uh, the whole sequence equal about 10 seconds so that I can have the, the opening title last for, let's say, you know, 8 seconds, dissolve it in, dissolve it out, something like that. So let me get this guy out of the way. I'll drag it up a couple layers. And I'll automatically create a new track when I do that. Drag you up a couple layers as well. I'll add the title that I created before to video 1. I'll drag it out to about 10 seconds. There we go. So there's the base. That's how we're going to start. And I want to put the stu two still images on top, and I want to put frames around them. So the frames, I, I just use a color mat to do the frame, and then I'll put a bevel edge on it to uh, make it look like a frame. So you make new color, uh, color mats by clicking on this new item icon and selecting color mat. That will create a solid color rectangle. You can take the, uh, the uh, default video settings that match the project, match the sequence. I want to get something that kind of matches this color, so I'm going to adjust this guy until I get something close to that color. There are other ways to go about matching the color, but this is good enough for our purposes here. I'll click OK. That creates this mat. Let me just name it uh, Frame. That's what we're going to use it for. 
Let me drag it down here. So we're putting the frame underneath uh, the first still. We'll take this still here. Which one is that one? Yeah, we'll take that still and put it here on the top of that frame for the time being. Get this guy out of the way for the time being. So I've got the still there and I've got a frame below it, but the still, is, of course, is as big as the frame, so I need to reduce the size of the still, so I select it, go to Effect Controls Panel, open up Motion. I can either click on Scale or drag Scale or click on Motion, any number of ways to change the size of it, so I'll just drag it down like that, and we'll position it like so. I need now to have the frame match the uh, size of this, but be a, little, be a little bit larger because we're going to bevel the edge. So I s click on frame to make it the currently selected click clip. I click on motion to turn on its bounding box, shrink it down, position it behind this guy. Before I get too price with precise with the positioning, I want to put a bevel edge on it and then I'll finish the positioning. So to find the bevel edges effect, I just type in BEV, and there's bevel edges right there, a separate effect called bevel edges. Drag that over to the frame. And that automatically creates a beveled edge, but that's not exactly what I had in mind. It's kind of really dark there and maybe too bright and awfully thick. So let me open up the bevel edges effect to kind of adjust this. The thickness doesn't need to be 0.1. I want to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to hold on the control key or the command key, control and Windows command on Mac so that when I drag this, it won't just take it to zero real fast. It's a slower way to, to move things. So I'm going to change the size of the bevel to something like that, a little more civilized. And I don't want the intensity of the light to be quite that intense. So I'll drag this thing down and make it a little less intense so that we can see all four sides. And now it's looking a little more civilized. I click on motion to begin to drag it in. Now, if I want the the width to fit better, I need to turn off what they call a uniform, a uniform scale. So I uncheck that box there inside motion. And now I can adjust just the width. And I can slide over a little bit to have it fit right. And that looks pretty good. We've got that guy pretty well lined up. What I need to do now is make sure that the grocery clip is as long as the frame. It should be 10 seconds long too. There we go. So this still will sit on top of that frame. Very good. Now with the next still, we'll put that on track 5, which doesn't exist yet. If you just drag it up, it automatically creates a new track. Take it to the beginning. And now with, with this one, I don't want all this other sort of junk around the edges. I want to work just with her. So I need to crop her. If I click motion and shrink her down, shrink down the, the frame, it'll shrink everything, not just her. I want to be able to put a crop around her and crop away this stuff. So let me just type in the word CROP. That brings up the crop effect here. Add that to her. And with the crop effect added, it has this little four-pointed thing here. That tells you that when you click on the word crop, it's going to add either a target in the middle or a bounding box around it. So I'll click on crop, and there's the bounding box, these little squares. Now, how can you tell that this is a crop bounding box and not the motion bounding box? Watch. If I click on motion, you'll see that motion has extra handles in the middle of each of the sides, whereas crop has only on the corner, because you can only crop by the edges. You can only crop the left and the right and the top and the bottom. And if you click on motion, you'll also see that it shows the anchor point there in the middle. So go back to crop, make sure it's selected because I don't want to shrink the whole clip just yet. And we'll bring the crop in to crop out all that sort of extra stuff around her. Focus just on her at the checkout stand of good old Molesbury's here in Santa Rosa, California. There we go. Let's maybe spread out a little bit more because she's kind of looking into the screen this way, so we'll have it cheat on the side a little bit. Now we need to move her a little bit, so I click back on motion, and now notice it highlights the entire frame, not just the cropped area. So we drag her around by dragging the whole frame around. I'm thinking that might be a little big if we're going to put a bevel edge around there, or a frame around there, so I'll bring it down a little bit like that. There we go. Now I need to add the uh, a frame behind her. I can go through the whole process of you know adding a frame, adding the shrinking it down, adding the bevel edge, and all that kind of stuff, and adjusting it. But I want the edges, the, the lighting and the edges, to match the one here on the left. So I take that frame itself, select it, right-click on it, and say copy. Now I want to paste it in this track. To paste it in the track, I need to turn off video one, otherwise it'll paste it there. And I need to turn on video four, it'll paste it there, and it'll paste it wherever the current time indicator is currently located. So I'll just leave it there for the time being. I'll go Control or Command V, and there it is. Let me go back to the beginning, and I'll drag it into place. It, it kind of shoved it off to the right there, which I did on purpose just to show you that it's no big deal. You can always just go do that. And there's the duplicated frame laying on top of the image below it. So I'll select that, make sure it's active. 
move it over. There we go. And the same thing as before, it already has uniform scale turned off, so I can adjust things independently here. And the edges, again, do match the other ones, so we don't need to worry about trying to match those guys up. So I drag these in. They may not center up, but that actually worked out pretty well. I got lucky. How about that? So, All right, there we go. So now we have made this five-layer sequence. I'll just show you that is five layers. Title, frame, still, frame, still. Got this five-layer sequence. Now, I could copy this entire sequence, all five layers, and paste it at the head of this thing. And it'll be this five-layer thing at the beginning. But that's not the goal here, folks. The goal is to take this guy and nest it inside the original project. So whenever you create a new sequence, it adds this uh, sequence up here. It looks very much like a clip. It has this little icon in front of it that says it's a sequence, but it will behave just like a clip would behave. So I can take this sequence, which is called Grocery Still 1, because that was the name of the image that I dragged down here to create it in the first place. So I'll go back there, and I'll take this nested sequence. So the sequence, and I'll nest it here at the front of this particular one. Now if I drag it there and just let it go, it's just going to cover things up. But I hold on the control key in Windows or the command key in a Mac, and it'll make it an insert, edit, and shove everything over, which is good. And now we've added this five-layer thing with all those images there, to which I can add, let's say, a cross dissolve at the beginning. So let me just go get a cross dissolve under Video Transitions, Dissolve, Cross Dissolve, put that at the beginning. And I can also put a cross dissolve at the end of it. Now, if I try to put a cross dissolve at the end of it, when it's butted up against another clip, it's going to want to put the cross dissolve on both of them. So I'm going to pull these guys away by marquee selecting all of them, drag them to the right just a little bit. Put the cross dissolve on this guy, so it'll just be on the left side, just on to the left, so it just affects that. I'll put the cross dissolve in the opening shot there. And what's going to happen now is that it'll dip to black and then come back up again. So I'll ripple delete there to put those guys back together. So it's going to go something like this, like that. And you heard the audio there, where it just kind of popped on. We can make that a little friendlier to do something called a J-cut, as it's called. So let me just expand the viewer a little bit. I'm going to take the audio of that uh, opening shot and drag it under the title a little ways. Expand the view here so you can see the audio track. And I'll add some keyframes here, such that I can fade the audio up. So to add a keyframe on the audio rubber band here, I just hover my cursor over it, press down the controller, the command key, that turns the cursor into a little plus, click there to add the keyframe, add another keyframe, drag that first one down, and so now the audio will gradually come up as we go to that opening shot. So that's the basic process of how you can add a multi-layer title uh, as a nested sequence to the beginning of a project here in Premiere Pro.